This is the landscape of Loch Crewe in County Meath, the location of a very significant uh, megalithic complex and the hills have a scattering of cairns and passage tombs on them but the whole area is littered with ancient sites uh, which includes ring forts and standing stones and uh, rock art etc etc. So just to give you an overview if we zoom out far enough we can just see how far inland Loch Crewe is from the coast. Um, this is the bend of the Boyne here containing Newgrange, Nouth and Douth. So Loch Crewe is, you know, um, not exactly west of it, but not very far. Uh, a tiny bit north of west, I suppose you could say. So just to give you an idea of the situation of the hills in the landscape. Um, so we have a little bit of relief here. So the westernmost hill is today known as Carnban West. And Carnban comes from the Irish Carn Bawn, which basically means white cairn or white heap of stones. And you can see immediately you can see some of the cairns on the summit. Probably the most significant being Cairn D which has this very large trench in it which is the result of what you might call a botched excavation. There were excavations carried out uh, by Eugene Conwell in the 1860s. This is Cairn L which I suppose is probably most famous for the fact that its chamber appears to be illuminated by the light of the rising sun on the February and November cross quarter days. Uh, I say it's known as Carnban West today. Uh, it seems from the folklore and the folk evidence in the locality that this hill was originally known as the Carnbon, the White Cairn. So the next hill over is known as Carrig Brack. I think the townland is Newtown and there's a cairn on it, but the remains on that hill are much less substantial in number than the other hills. And then we nip on over to Cairnban East which has the most famous of the cairns on it Cairn T which is this one here and several other I suppose you could call them partly destroyed or denuded uh, cairns uh, Cairn S Cairn T, Cairn U Cairn V and there are other uh, cairns which are uh, in a, I suppose you could call them a varying state of uh, repair or survival we're looking at a landscape in terms of the Stone Age and in terms of the megalithic remains we're looking at a landscape that was um, constructed by the community there around 3500 BC so we're talking five and a half thousand years ago possibly earlier but we don't have any sort of reliable carbon dating the only excavation to be carried out at Loch Crewe in the 20th century was carried out by Barry Raftery in the 1940s sorry Joseph, Raff Joseph Raftery in the 1940s. Um, and then we move over to Patrickstown Hill. Now Patrickstown is undoubtedly uh, a Christian name uh, after the saint, Saint Patrick. Um, and I'm not sure if we know its original name. Uh, there are cairns here, there's the remains of features in, uh, sorry not there, over here, uh, there's a standing stone there with a uh, an enclosure around it. So that's the easternmost of the four hills. There are four hills in total. And sorry, I forgot to mention that uh, Carnban East, I think, in former times was known as the Hill of the Witch or Schlieve na Kaliga. So the westernmost hill was Carnban and this one was the Hill of the Kaliak. And indeed, in the older Ordnance Survey maps, this cairn is known as the Kalyax Cairn and there's a large stone at Cairn T which is said to be which is known locally as the Hag's Chair. I can show you this on the Ordnance Survey maps. I can give you an idea of the layout of the landscape. So this is uh, the um, Ordnance Survey, the modern Ordnance Survey map of the area. As you can see this is Cairnban West and look the townland immediately to the west of it is called Cairnban. Carrig Brack is in the townland of Newtown and then we have Cairnban East with the smattering of Cairns there. And Patrickstown, you see there's a townland also called Patrickstown 
which is largely covered in forest today and a whole load of monuments in the Ballon Valley townland and drum drum sorry uh, and we can flick the wonderful thing about this site which is archaeology.ie is that we can have a look at the different ordnance survey maps and we can look at how the sites were known and labeled in former times so you can see here Carnban West and there's a list or a, 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 a representations of the cairns and the remains of cairns then Schlievna Kalik Kalik which is the one we said is Karen Van East and you can see here it says the Hags Karen and the Hags Chair which is Karen T and it's uh, it's uh, chair shaped or throne shaped chair anyway very quickly the legend of Lochru is that the 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 Kalyak who we know as a a, a hag or a crone or a witch who was likely to have been a prehistoric goddess of the land um, was trying to jump from hill to hill uh, I think in, in the local stories from the west towards the east and she was carrying an apron full of stones and as she jumped from hill to hill she dropped some of the stones from her apron and they fell and formed the cairns and the story says that when she got to Patrick's town she slipped and fell and broke her neck and she died and there is a, in the folk uh, archives there is a story that says uh, a heap of stones somewhere on the eastern side of Patrickstown was uh, um, dedicated to uh, the Kalyak I think it was said to have been the Kalyak's grave um, in most versions of the story that I've heard Carrick Brack doesn't feature so the, 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 the hag appears to jump from Carnban West to Carnban East and then on to Patrick's Town. Interestingly, if you're uh, in Carnban, uh, sorry, if you're in Carn T on Carnban East on the equinoxes and you're looking out uh, through the passageway towards the spring equinox sunrise, you're looking uh, towards in the distance the Hill of Lloyd, which has some sort of prehistoric structures on it, and then in the distance the Hill of Slain, which is famous for the place where Patrick. Uh, lit the Paschal fire but which indeed has some uh, prehistoric structures including a mound on it of unknown age but which archaeologists are investigating as possibly being at least an Iron Age mound if not uh, something earlier than that. So this is the landscape. Uh, if you get a chance to visit it's a fantastic place It's it really feels organic and wild and unspoilt um, it's not uh, as sort of reconstructed like Nouth and Newgrange and Brunabonia and it's a beautiful landscape uh, Carn T is almost a thousand feet above sea level and you get sweeping views of the landscape all around